Comparing Absolute Values, Lesson 1.3b. This is the second part of Lesson 1.3. As we saw in the last lesson, a number's absolute value is its distance from zero on a number line. A number's distance from zero is how many jumps it is from zero. So the absolute value of negative three is three, because it's three jumps from zero, and the absolute value of a positive 3 is also 3, because it's 3 jumps from 0. An absolute value is a distance, and distances are always positive numbers. So absolute values are always positive numbers. Negative numbers are less than positive numbers, but the absolute value of a negative number can be greater than the absolute value of a positive number. Here we have negative 3, and here we have a positive 2. And negative 3 is less than a positive 2. But the absolute value of negative 3 is greater than the absolute value of 2. It's its distance from 0. This is 3 jumps from 0. This is 2 jumps from 0. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3 for 3 jumps. And the absolute value of a positive 2 is 2 for the 2 jumps, and 3 is greater than 2. So the absolute value of a negative number can be greater than the absolute value of a positive number. So notice that here it's saying less than, but when we use absolute values, it's now greater than. The sign flipped. The sign won't always flip. It'll only flip if it's farther from zero, and then it'll be greater than the absolute value of the other number. So now we're going to discuss real-world problems with debts and money and credit cards. When we work with money, a loss or a debt can be represented by a negative number. Negative changes represent money that we spent. Here's a credit card balance that's zero. It's completely paid off, but then they spent $20. Their new balance is negative $20. That means they owe $20 to the credit card company. When we use a credit card, we borrow money and go more in debt. But for a gift card, there was $100 on the gift card and they spent $20. Now the new balance is a positive $80. This represents money that is ours like cash. That's a gift card. For a credit card, it's money we owe because we're borrowing it. Now, there's a part in the textbook that says when someone owes a positive amount, it means they have a negative balance. And that could be very confusing. So let's break this down before we actually try working a problem that's similar to that one. Here we have three electric bills. Let's take a closer look at this one. Here it says the amount due was $40 and the amount paid was $40, so their balance is zero. They paid the bill in full and owes zero dollars now. Now let's look at the second one. It says the amount due was $60, but the amount paid was 50. They have a balance of $10. They didn't pay enough. The bill was 60, but they only paid 50, so they still owe $10. They didn't pay enough. They owe a positive amount, they have a debt of $10, it's a negative balance. So even though that's a positive $10, they owe $10. Now look at this bill. It says the amount due was 50, but they paid 60. They paid $10 too much. So their balance is a negative 10. They paid too much, they owe a negative amount, they have a $10 credit, which is a positive balance. When someone owes a positive amount, the amount owed is the absolute value of the account balance. Now, for the parents, if this is still very confusing for your student, in the real world, a negative amount, like here, for a balance on a bill represents an overpayment, a credit on the account, a positive balance. So the textbook wording may be confusing, but think of the word owe or the word spent in place of a negative sign. If it says owe $10, that's a negative $10. We could think of it that way. 
So when someone owes a positive amount, that means they have a negative balance. They have a debt. We use absolute value to compare two negative numbers, such as fees owed, amounts owed on a credit card, mortgage, car, or other types of loans. We compare the absolute values of the negative numbers, and the number with the greatest absolute value is the lesser amount, indicating a greater amount owed. So, when someone owes a positive amount, it means they have a negative balance. They owe. Sam and Tala owe money on their credit card accounts. One of them owes $10 and the other one owes $20. We need to answer the question to find how much they each owe and write their names on these lines. So remember, the person who owes more will have a balance with a greater absolute value. So, here we go. Sam's balance is less than negative $15. Does Sam owe more than $15 or less than $15? So remember, the more in debt we are, the more it's going to be on the left on the number line, and the values decrease. And as the values increase, it heads to the right. And remember that absolute value is the distance from zero. So it says Sam's balance is less than negative $15. Well, here's less. Here's negative $15, and that means less than negative $15 is going to be going this direction. It's going to be going this way to be less than negative 15. So does Sam owe more than $15 or less than $15? What's the absolute value of negative 15? We have the absolute value. We have negative 15. We know it's how many jumps it away it is from zero, and this is 15 jumps from zero. So does Sam owe more than 15 or less than 15? If it's going this direction on the number line, it says it's less than negative 15, it would be more. The answer here would be more. And I know this can be confusing. So if you need to rewind back to when I was explaining it with the electric bills, that might help you. So we know his balance is more than that. That means it must be the $20 because that's more than 15. 10 is less than 15. So this is Sam. This must be Tala. It's the only other one left. Process of elimination. So, remember, absolute value is the distance from zero. So remember, less than negative 15 means farther left on the number line than negative 15, so it has a greater absolute value. It's farther from zero. And what if the temperature outside was less than negative 15 degrees? Would the temperature be below zero more or less than 15 degrees? If it's, if the temperature outside was less than ne negative 15 degrees, then it might be negative 16, negative 17, negative 18, because that would be colder. That would be less than negative 15 degrees. Okay? It would be more below zero than 15. When a number is non-negative, that means it's not negative, it's equal to its absolute value. So we have a positive 8. The absolute value of a positive 8 is 8. It's equal to its absolute value. It's not a negative. And absolute values are always positive numbers. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8. It's a distance. It's 8 jumps from 0. It's a positive 8. If you missed the previous lesson, 1.3a, it's in the description of this video, and you can just click on it. So we've completed this lesson. Our next lesson is going to be 2.1a. We're going to talk about finding the greatest common factor, and 2.1 is split into two parts. So you want to make sure you watch both of them. I did my best to explain this. I hope you understood. You can hit the like button to let me know. If you're still confused, remember, go back to 
these electric bills and that'll help you, okay? Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.